In a recent speech, President Obama stated the need to attract more women and underrepresented minorities in, to STEM. STEM meaning science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, why would he pick on that group when we need all people to, to participate in STEM, more in STEM education? And the reason is that so few of us are represented in the STEM field. Underrepresented minorities are roughly 26% of the population of this country, but less than 5% of the science, engineering, and technology workforce. Women, 51 or greater percentage of the population, but less than 20% of the science STEM workforce. And it's well known in STEM that diversity of people leads to progress. And so for those two reasons, uh, we need more people, more underrepresented minorities and women to become involved in technology. But there are problems that impede the progress of women and underrepresented minorities in STEM. And um, some of them are, you know, technology is too hard. Uh, it's too demanding. Uh, it's for nerves. Those are all myths that we must destroy in order to move forward, in order that underrepresented minorities and women see science and technology as potential careers. Since the beginning of time, technology has been the progress tool for, for man. And at no time is it more important than now, the 21st century, to look to science and technology for solutions. And one of the main reasons that it is important today is our spaceship Earth is in disrepair and needs to be fixed. And I'm afraid that technology is one of the few ways that we can mend the, the, uh, the situation. How many of you have heard of the National Inventors Hall of Fame? Yeah, not many of you. Only a few. Yeah, I had a problem too because 15 years ago when I was called, got the congratulatory call, I almost hung up because I <laughs> knew that the next thing would be how much money can you give us? Well, I, I hung on long enough to find out that it was truly an award and that I was inducted into an elite group of people. The National Inventors Hall of Fame is located in Akron, Ohio. It's the home birthplace of LeBron James. Um, it, it sits right between the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is in Cleveland, and the Football Hall of Fame, which is in Canton, Ohio. But few young people stop in Akron to see the true leaders of the world, to see the people who made it possible for LeBron James and other entertainers to become famous. Because without technology, Without technology, I would be as well known as LeBron James. As a matter of fact, I'd probably be making more money than LeBron James. But those are different paradigms that we, uh, we um, have to address and one of the points that we have to make in the future. So why did the president single out underrepresented minorities and women? Because diversity in STEM is really very important. We must remind our children, we must remind our students that there are career possibilities in, in, uh, in uh, STEM for everyone. The first patent issued to a woman was to Mary Keyes, and this was in 1809 for a weaving process. In, 19, in 1821, Thomas Jennings was granted a patent for dry cleaning. And mind you, uh, in slavery, the slave owner not only owned the manual labor, but also owned the intellectual property that his slaves or her slaves might generate. Um, so both groups were delayed in getting started in, in, in the process. 
Um, but today there are 28 women inductees in the National Inventors Hall of Fame and 22 underrepresented minority inductees into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Now, mind you, the, to qualify or to be considered for induction, your patent or your intellectual property must have changed the way we live, must have changed our lives. The two people that I mentioned earlier, uh, Kays and, and uh, Jennings, are also inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame, not because they were the first woman or black, but because their patents really changed the way we live. They changed the quality of life for all. So it is, I think, possible or impossible for those of you in the audience to name more than five male, I mean, uh, underrepresented minority or women inductees into the Inventors Hall of Fame. So we don't know our history, and that's sad. And that's one of the problems that impede the progress of, of human beings. If we don't know our history, if we don't know that there are women and underrepresented minority inductees into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, what's to inspire the young people to, uh, to pursue those careers? Well, in the remaining time that I have, I'm going to give you some material to use with younger people because I'm going to talk a little bit about the, some of the other inductees into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Lincoln Hawkins, who was my mentor at Bell Labs, and mentoring is certainly very important, uh, but Link Hawkins' patents are considered some of the most money-saving patents ever because he learned to process polyethylene so that it wouldn't degrade under irradiation from the sun. Now, prior to a plastic, lead was used to sheath both communications cables and power cables. And we all know that lead is extremely poisonous and dangerous today. And so just imagine what it would be like with, with, uh, with lead sheathing all the cables in our homes. We'd, a lot more lead poisoning would be there. Most of you recognize the picture to the right or left. I'm the one with the Dodger symbol. I'm sure most of you recognize him. This is, this is uh, Jackie Robinson, who was the first black person to play professional baseball in this country. And I believe he was a member of the Dodgers in 1944 or 1945, but Dr. Lincoln Hawkins was a member of the technical staff at Bell Laboratories in 1942 when he started. So technology is a lot more liberated than one would expect. Um, Link Hawkins is inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame for uh, learning to cure polyethylene so it wouldn't degrade under radiation uh, from the sun. Martha Coston, who invented the signal flares that allowed ships to talk to each other uh, from between ships. And, and this is kind of a strange invention for women. You'd expect them to invent the iron, or stuff like that, but uh, I'll show you that this is, that they're a little bit, bit more broad-minded than that. Um, Julio Palmez, um, uh, hopefully none of you in this audience, but I'm sure you know people who have stents because of blocked arteries. Well, this is a man that you can think for inventing the stent that allowed you to uh, uh, continue living. Granville T. Woods is one of my favorite inventors, very prolific uh, inventor, uh, but I only have time to talk about one of his inventions, and uh, he had a patent on the carbon microphone, and he sold that patent to A.G. Bell, and the carbon microphone was the first commercially available microphone in telephony invented by a black man, only to be replaced by a microphone invented by another black man. So you see here the chain gets rolling, and um, um, some of you may have family that are police officers. Some of you may have relatives, or some of you may have been 
in the war in Afghanistan and Iran. Well, those of you who have had that experience know that Kevlar vests saved many lives. This is a lady that you can thank for inventing Kevlar. Elijah McCoy, ever heard the phrase the real McCoy? Okay, let me tell you where it came from. Elijah McCoy was oil on the railroad. It, the train had to stop and he had to swab in a bucket of oil and he'd oil the bearings on the train and he and his father were able to save enough money to send Elijah to engineering school. But no school in this country would accept him. So he went to England to earn his degree. He came back to this country, presented his degree to his boss on the railroad, and the boss gave him his oil can back. But that didn't stop Elijah McCoy, because he put all self-oilers out of business by inventing an automatic engine lubrication machine. And it became known as the real McCoy because many people tried to copy it, but unsuccessfully. And so when people wanted an automatic oiler, they said, I want the real McCoy. <laughs> All of you have personal computers. Well, this is a man that you can thank for, uh, for the uh, personal computer, Mark Dean, who invented the processor that allowed, the, uh, allowed you to have a PC, the one that you have now, still based on the technology that he taught. Um, uh, and now if I move on, um, uh, and I'm having trouble reading the small script, but you can. Uh, I, he's not an inductee into the, in, into the Inventors Hall of Fame, but I like to talk about him because he's a mathematician. And he used his, his math to, at, at, um, to train young people, especially underrepresented minority and female. He concentrates on them. Uh, Helen Free, the dip test for, uh, for diabetes, uh, is invented by uh, Helen Fries, who uh, is uh, uh, one that I also uh, met, have met many times during induction ceremony. Um, to conclude, not only are we need to inform our young people about possible careers in technology. But a lot of us are working on programs right here in the city of Baltimore. Johns Hopkins University has an NSF grant to train not only teachers but students at the fifth grade level to be better in science and technology. The National Inventors Hall of Fame has camp invention and it has club invention, but it also started a new school in Akron, an experimental school, that's based on those things that were very important to inductees growing up, tinkering. A screwdriver and a pair of pliers, anything that had screws in it were dangerous when I grew up because I would open it to find out how it worked. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my talk and thank you very much.